Okay, we're back. We're picking up where we left off. This is uh, part two of our lesson on the roll cage. And here we're going to add a uniform field that will act upon our roll bar in order to push it down the street. Now, ultimately, this is also going to cause the flipping. So let's select our cage, and I'll go to Fields and choose Uniform. Something to note here, too, do make sure that you're in N Dynamics uh, for this. There is a separate uniform field in the regular Dynamics. It does not connect in the same way. So make sure you're just under N Dynamics and choose Uniform. And that uniform field is going to be placed in the middle of our world or in the center of our world. I'm going to leave it right there, mainly because our, our scene was built around that anyways. So that's going to work just fine for us. And we're going to go down, and we want to modify our magnitude, attenuation, and our direction. First up is the direction. We don't want this to push our object into the x value. We want it to go into the z, as we can see right here. So it'll push down the length of our road. As far as the attenuation is concerned, I'm going to drop that way down right away. Uh, and we'll just set that to 0 0.08 so that I don't have uh, a really lengthy fall off there. It's just going to drop it quickly. Okay, And for my overall magnitude, I'm going to set that to 3,000. Give it a really nice force there. And we'll hit play. All right, and it zooms along. Okay, so the nucleus, oh, <laughs> there it goes. So the nucleus is using the gravity okay, to pull our object down to our road while our uniform field is shooting it into that direction, down the length of our road. Okay, so we can see that's very effective. It definitely is working the way that we hoped and that we expect it to. Okay, but I don't want to have that magnitude run for the entire animation, so I'm going to keyframe this. And at frame one, I just want that to be zero. All right, so we'll just set that there. And then as we go out, um, by frame 40, I'm going to have this spike to our 3,000. And then by frame 60, I want that to shut down again, back down to zero. Whoops, and we didn't set our key there. I don't have my auto key on, so let's just go back and... Re-enter that, and you set key. Okay, so that's going to kill that, so it'll shoot it, okay, and then stop. And so we can still see our roll cage taking a dive there off of the end. Okay, so that's working for us there. Now we need it to flip and tumble. Now this is the harder part, okay? Pretty easy to get it moving, but as far as actually causing this flip to happen, we need to have some sort of friction force between these two surfaces, okay? The surface of the cage and the surface of the road. Let's start with the road. Um, the road, I'm going to say, is just a fixed surface as it is, but I'm going to set these values and I'm going to leave them. Whereas the roll cage, I'll use it to make modifications to. This way, I'm not trying to bounce back and forth between two objects trying to find some magic number. So let's go to the road, and I'm going to take my bounce, and let's set this to point 0.2. Friction, I'm going to leave right there at point 0.1. And the stickiness, I'm going to change to point 0.137. Okay? Really crazy odd number, uh, but as far as the stickiness is concerned with the road, it really works out well. Um, so I'm just going to leave that. I know that that value works in the direction that I'm headed, so we're just going to go with that one. And then let's go to our roll cage. And we'll modify our bounce friction and stickiness here. Now before I do that, let's just see how things are coming along. Let's just hit play. All right, perfect. Okay, not flipping, but it's not freaking out. It's not running off of the end of the road either. So moving forward, we can see it's definitely got a little bit of friction there between the surface as it kind of swiveled just a little bit and a little bit of curve uh, as it drove down the road. 
So now for the bounce of my roll bar, let's just start that uh, right there at point 0.3. I'll leave the friction right there at point 0.1, and let's then take our stickiness, and we'll try a value of point 0.1 there. And we'll hit play. Okay, pretty cool. Comes down the road and then kind of spins out. Not too bad, still not flipping over on its side. Now what we could attempt to do here is to take that uniform field animation and continue it a little bit longer than when it spins out and goes to its side, that could cause it to flip. However, there's a lot of ifs that are in that. So instead, what I'm going to do is just take my roll cage, and I'm going to start it off with a rotation already in there. Okay, so I'm just going to rotate that in the Y, somewhere right around there, and hit play. Okay, and boom, we've got a truck rolling. Okay, now that worked out pretty well. Okay, but if we want to experiment a bit, uh, we could try taking the stickiness down to zero, okay, and see what we get. Remember, the road still has some stickiness, so that will still cause some action there. Whoop, and we just fell through the surface. Now, this is actually, this is a great point. So, uh, let's hit play again. You can see that the simulation says, nope, not going to do it, uh, and it just falls into oblivion. This most likely, okay, is being caused by our sub-steps and our collision iterations. They're really low. Three and four uh, are the default settings. I'm going to crank those up just a bit. So I'm going to go to six and 20, and we'll hit play again. Okay, definitely a little slower this time. Okay, and very different simulation. Not falling through the floor, though. That's good. So we're going to have to keep that up high so that it doesn't fall through the floor. Okay, and now we can just kind of play with these numbers to see what we could get. So let's uh, let's take our friction down a little bit. And we'll play our simulation again. Okay, still not enough action there. Let's just try taking that all the way out. Okay, not enough... Not enough flipping there at all. So we can go back and forth here between our friction and our stickiness okay, to see if we can get just different variations in our simulation. Okay, and we can get all sorts of different types of flips out of it here. Okay, if we can get it to flip again, we might have to drop this back down. Uh, let's see, let's try... Uh, Let's go to 4 and 10 so that it is not so stable. And let's see. I think we meet, might need to up our uniform field here a little bit. We'll try with zero friction. All right, let's let's force it. So again, we've got multiple parameters here that we can play with in order to get the effect that we're after. Uh, I'm going to go into my uniform field. And let's hike this up. Now, I did leave my... Oop, that is not what we wanted. Let's back that out. There we go. Uh, I did leave my friction off there. We'll have, probably have to go back and crank that uh, up a little bit higher. There we go. So now we're getting some good speed out of it, and that's probably going to take it a little too far. Eh, not too bad. It might stop. Yeah, that's actually pretty good right there. So let's just watch that back one more time. Okay, so you can see right there, and then eventually that friction and that bounce kicks in. Okay, and we get a, we get a pretty nice flip out of it. So 
those are the major parameters that we want to mess with there. We have that uniform field. That's going to be the force that is going to push it down the road. Then on our roll cage, we have our friction and our stickiness. Now again, this is happening kind of late in our animation. It's really making a lot of progress down the road before it starts its flip. So we could go back in, add some friction. Okay, and there it goes. It flips a little bit sooner. Whoop, and then we go through the floor again. Okay, so we might want to go back to our nucleus. I was knew I'd be right the first time. There was 6 and 20. Okay, and so I'd probably leave it at 6 and 20, and then we could go ahead and now make our modifications uh, just to our roll cage. Okay, there we go. We get it on its uh, all the way on its top there. Okay, so I've already cached this simulation, so I'm going to attach it, and we'll just do attach existing cache file, and I have my roll bar seen right there. Okay, and we'll hit play. Okay, and I get my simulation, although the translation uh, is off just a little bit there. So we can go in and there we go. We'll just make that modification there. Okay, and now we have a nice, decent roll simulation. Okay, all right, that concludes our, our lesson here. That is a look at part two of our roll cage simulation.